Hello everybody and welcome to my guide for Engineer Extreme. Now in this video, I'll be talking about the mechanics in this fight and breaking them down to the best of my ability. So I hope it helps you out in getting the clear. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into the video. Now once the fight starts, there will be a massive raid wide, Legia and Forgotten. And once that happens, two planets will spawn around the platform and it will be ahead in the middle. We'll be facing in a random direction and let's check it out so the wave light goes off we have the planets and we have the head so real quick what the head does it will face in a random direction and cleave half the planet wall. that's basically what it will do so keep that in mind and save for later and as for the planets now this can either be a red one or a blue one. Is there going to be red and blue at the same time? Is that going to be a set of red or a set of blue? The order for the first one is completely random. Now, what the red planets do, they basically have a huge circular explosion chariot, and you have to avoid that because if it hits, you are 99% dead because it hits too hard and gives you a one stack as well. So when the planets spawn, you need to find one, one of them. That's pretty much it. Just find one and see if it's moving slow or fast. Let's check it out. All right, so this planet is moving slow and I'll move away from it to avoid the explosion. Why? Because in, in this mechanic, whether it's blue or red, the slow moving planet is always gonna be the origin point, the collision point for the mechanic. So in this case, it's going to be an explosion. We have to avoid it. So that happened. The explosion was over here. We moved away from it. And while we did that, the head will cleave this side of the platform. Because it was facing in that direction. And then the second set of this mechanic will happen. And this time, it's 100% guaranteed that the planets will be blue. Like the third one did not spawn the first, will be the second one to spawn. Now, the head was facing in that direction, so we know it's unsafe, and we have to use a knockback to push us over here. Again, the slow moving planet was the origin. Let me rewind that a little bit. As you can see, the slow moving planet is coming over here. This is where the uh, collision will happen, and we have a knockback. Let's check it out. The knockback happens. I go over here and then I use a gap to put in the gap. So real quick, knockback immunities are not gonna work over here. I tried that. Inner release, arm slam, not gonna work. However, you can use a gap closer to sort of work your way around, real quick. And after this, after the second set resolves, the boss will cast another attack, Cataclysmoy or something like that. And this is basically towers and four on each side will spawn as you can see on the screen and all eight players will have chains on them. And then the boss will start casting Grip of Despair. Now what this does is that it tethers tanks and healers to each DPS. The tethers will not work like, you know, a tank is tethered to a healer and stuff like that. It will always be the support roles, tanks and healers, tethered to a DPS. So the way we did it was tanks and heaters basically went left facing the boss and DPS went right. We go to our respective directions to break the chains and then we move into the tower to soak it. Now real quick, if you don't break the chains in time, you will take damage and it'll give you a wall stack as well and basically kill you if you're not in tank. But once you break the chains, you move into your tower soak it and at the same time you look at the boss's face because it will be casting a length of snow if the boss's face is you know glowing the mouth is glowing it's going to be an attack straight to the center if it's crying it's going to be a sideways cleave like you know uh the center will be safe like right now we saw that this was a cleave through the middle because the boss's mouth was glowing like this is straight out of normal mode there's nothing new over here, only the towers add extra pressure to you. So just make sure to look at the boss's face 
when you're in the tower to soak it. And after that, it's pretty much just a raid vibe. Just mitigate it as you want. And there will then be a tank buster. Let's check it out. The good thing over here is that the area around the stellar draft is full. So you just do your thing, if you're a tank. And after that, we will have the same thing again, the planet mechanic. The League Young forgot it. However, this time will be an added layer to make it more, uh, you know, more of a technical thing. So you look for one planet, you adjust yourself for the knockback, and then this time the boss will start casting Aranan. Now this is a stack mechanic. Both of your healers will be targeted with the stack, and you have to use the knockback to position yourself in the safe spot. Now I didn't do this right because I you know, didn't position myself accordingly, and it sent me to the wrong side of the platform, and now I'll get beat. So you do that, you spread out to handle the stacks. This will also put a 2 second magic wand debuff on you, so... So once that is resolved, the boss will cast Fatalism. It will basically rebind the collision that just happened. Let's check it out. Oh, okay, so over here, we have two sets, right? The thing that you need to know is that one of these sets is going to materialize faster. And that is the set that will go first. It needs to be resolved first. So let's take a look. All right, so the one behind me was the first one. So I'm moving close for the knockback. It pushes me over to the other one. And then I use the other set to get myself knocked back and then position in for Elenkos. Again, now after every major mechanic in this fight, the boss is going to use Elenkos. So you need to be like positioning your camera in a way that as you're doing the mechanic, you see the boss in his face and handle the mechanic properly. So what basically happens over here is that five heads will spawn, right? After that, the boss will start casting a four young forgotten and you have enough time to find a safe spot to go into. What happens is that the middle head is going to cleave aside. So over here, it's facing in this direction towards the north. This entire half platform is unsafe meaning that these two heads cannot possibly be the safe spot even if they are you know a donut let's see real quick all right so we see the donut over here but it's not the safe spot because this head will cleave this entire area so we move over here we have enough time to do that and then we can max melee the boss for uptime and then we rotate clockwise and you saw that the head rotated clockwise as well remember that this is the first cleave the north side it's really important move clockwise the boss leaves the east end we move clockwise again and now the head leaves the south side all right so we remember that the head in, in the middle leave this half first that is really important all right so now the rings appear right it has three rings meaning it will rewind three times that means one ring this is the side it will cleave second this that's the second rewind and then third is the third rewind meaning it'll go back and cleave the northern side what that means is that this side is not safe anymore either it's not so we can go over here to resolve this mechanic because this middle head has three rings and it will rewind three times right remember when i said take note of first sided cleave this is why so now you know that the northern half is not safe meaning that you only have to decide which of these platforms these heads are safe now we started over here previously and then move clockwise to this safe spot, right? What that means is that this area 
is going to be the opposite. Let's check it out. So, okay. So this was safe. The reason why it was safe was because when the mechanics started, when we went to southeast over here for the safe spot the first time, this area was not safe. And because it was not safe, it is now safe. Because two rings basically means the opposite. So you have to keep that in mind. And that is pretty much it for this mechanic. And after that, it's Olenkos. So once again, what basically happens is that all of those heads will have rings on them, right? When that when those rings appear, you need to look at the middle head, the one in the middle, like over here. Look at this one, right? If it has three rings, it will basically cleave the side it cleaved the very first time. If it has one ring, it will basically stay the same. So we saw that this head was over here at the first, right? It was facing in this direction. It cleaved this side, then it cleaves this side, then it cleaves the southern side, right? And right now it's facing over here. And it has three rings, which means it will rewind three times. And then it goes from one, which will cleave this, and then two, which will means that it will cleave this side, and then three, the third rewind, meaning it will cleave this side. So that's how it basically works. If it has three rings, it will rewind three times. And for the heads on the other side, if it's two, it means the opposite of what they were. And if it's one or three, that means they stay the same. So that's what basically happened over here. We move in, then we have the heads start to pop. We have the save zone over here, and then we have the stack markers. We split, and we're here as the stacks are going off, right? The boss is also casting a Lankos. So right now we need to see whether the boss is crying or is not going. So right now it was crying, right? So the outer sides were unsafe. So the stack markers need to be positioned in the center. And over there you soak them, and that's pretty much it for the mechanic. And then we have the tank buster. much for now so this is the next major mechanic and if you've done e12s this is basically like intermediate relativity there are four mechanics there's this one a donut basically like the ones we just saw and the five heads it's a donut and then we have you can see the indicators over here we have a stack and we have two proximity uh, monitors so how you handle this is that the proximity markers move out towards you enough, of course. The rings, the donuts, we stack on one. So you can see the markers over here, right? So you can assign positions to your party members, but the idea over here is that the proximity markers go towards the outer edge of the platform. And the ones with stack and donuts stack on one. This allows us to resolve the mechanics without any issue. And after that, there will be a second set. Now keep in mind that we have the debuff over here, right? Number one. This is basically recording each mechanic. So right now it's one. This is the second set. I have player right now, so I go over to the A. And now it will go all. And see, the stack changed to two. And at the same time as the second mechanic, the spear and forgotten goes off, the boss will again cast the Lankos. Again, keep in mind, after every major mechanic, the boss will cast the Lankos. So you look at its face, she's crying, the center is safe. So you go there, and now we wait for the third, the spear and forgotten echo. Okay, so this time we have the, this is the fourth mechanic. And you know, fourth mechanic in the spirit and forgotten, the fourth possibility. 
big purple AoEs on each character, each player. So, um, to be honest, we just banged it over here. Uh, there were no designated positions. So, that's pretty much how you resolve those one by one, right? But right now, again, Fatalism. You can also use this mechanic to sort of understand how the five heads work. So right now we had three uh, mechanics to spin forgotten. I had the donut first, then the flare, and then the big purple AOE. Now I have two rings on me. That means I am being reminded two times in the past, right? So I will be having the flare over here to deal with. So the cast goes off and I move away. takes a while to pop like the five heads and then it appears see i have the flare marker so this basically sort of explains how the five heads work like twin songs of Oria is like the probably the most challenging mechanic of this fight to be honest and that's basically how you uh, deal with that it's really easy and telemania is basically that uh raid by attack from normal mode the really cinematic one. Next mechanic is End Songs of Euphoria. What happens over here is that these heads again will spawn towards the uh, outer side of the arena. And then the boss starts casting End Song. What happens after that is these rings appear from her mouth. Now, you need to actually pay attention to these rings because they will go to these heads. And then the heads that receive the ring will do a huge circular chariot AoE. Let's check it out. So I'm looking at the rings and I move over here. Now you can see that these areas are overlapped. These AoEs are overlapped. However, there is still a small safe spot over here. Over here in this mechanic, the one thing you need to do, to be honest, is just pay attention to the rings, see where they're going. Try to predict their, you know, trajectory where they're going. Because it, you have to react to it beforehand and move in to the safe spot. Because if you're too slow, you will get hit. And, you know, it kind of goes off fast. And again, major mechanic, Elenkos. It's always followed up by Elenkos. Just look at the face, be sure to look at the face and deal with it accordingly. And after that we have a raid bite again. Pillows. This is actually pretty much it. And then we have a tank buster. The whole thing. Believe you unforgotten. Like this mechanic is the same thing, right? However, it is a culmination. This is the final stretch. Like this is the final part. Over here, you need to pay attention because a lot of stuff is going to happen. Let's check it out. We know we have to look at the head in the middle, where it's facing, so remember that. And after that, you look at the planets, it's red, it's about to explode, so we move away. And then we have the stacks blue to deal with. So we do that while keeping an eye on the head. Cool. And now, there's going to be Fatalism. So we know what that happens see? So we have the collisions again. However, this time we have four sets. Two sets of red planets and then two sets of blue planets. The same rule is being applied. The ones that appear first, faster, they're the ones that'll explode first. And then move towards the opposite side to avoid the explosion. And then look, look at the blue ones. See, the ones on the north side over here, they appear super fast. So look at this. This is still forming, but this one is like already ready to like flash or something. Look at that. So we use this knockback to position, our, uh, position ourselves towards this side. And then we use a knockback again to uh, you know, position ourselves for the towers. 
and then again, Elenkos. So a lot is happening over here. However, there are no chains. Great. So, if this is pretty much it. Like, this is the final race. Like, if you clear this part without any deaths, then it's pretty much just, you know, a home run. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the for the video. End singer extreme. Interesting fight. I give it an 8.5 out of 10. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I hope you guys find this helpful. And yeah, thank you for watching. See ya.